Um, I am from Esri in Redlands, California, and uh, I am one of the cartographers uh, that have been working on the, uh, the new OpenStreetMap vector base map that we have been developing uh, this year. And that's the talk that I'm going to do today. And uh, this is my first time here at the State of the Map, so I'm very excited to be here. So I hope that you like my presentation today. Uh, but before I start talking about the, uh, our OpenStreetMap vector base map, uh, this is basically like a, a summary of uh, all the involvements in which ESRI has been uh, working with OpenStreetMap over the last uh, past few years. Uh, we have been hosting a raster tile service uh, for uh, several years as part of our uh, base maps uh, gallery in ArcGIS Online that people can use as uh, a background or as a base map for their web maps and applications. And it's been one of our most popular uh, base maps that we have. Uh, we have been adding data, uh, OSM data, into our S3 vector base maps and raster base maps as well. Uh, in areas of the world where we don't have a lot of good content from commercial sources or community sources, so uh, we have been enriching uh, those parts of the world, like in Africa and in, in Asia, uh, with great content from the OSM data. We have been providing also uh, an, an extension uh, that can be used with ArcMap called ArcGIS Editor for OSM in which people uh, can uh, download OSM data, they can edit the data in ArcMap, and then they can upload it back online to the OSM uh, database if they want to. Uh, also, we have been providing since, I think, a year ago, our, uh, our uh, world uh, imagery service uh, as part of the OSM editor, such as the ID editor. Uh, that one provides uh, like one meter or better satellite and aerial imagery in many parts of the world. And it is made of commercial data sources like Digital Globe and community sources like cities, uh, counties, and countries like uh, Canada, Spain, and Germany. We have been providing also our new uh, Clarity imagery service, which offers more clear and accurate imagery compared to our uh, world imagery, although not the most updated necessarily. So for example, if you see a region uh, with clouds in our uh, world imagery, uh, we could offer it cloud-free in the Clarity service. And now uh, I'm going to start about, uh, to talk about our vector base map. Uh, it is 100% uh, based on the OSM data, and uh, we try to mimic the same cartography as a regular OpenStreetMap that we have online. Uh, it's in beta release right now. We started working on it since the beginning of this year, so we have been uh, improving it a lot over time. Um, it, it was created using ArcGIS Pro, and it is right now host, hosted in ArcGIS Online. And right now, we have it updated every three to four weeks uh, with uh, updates on the data and updates in the cartography. And once we release it out of beta, uh, it will be freely available to uh, all of you to use. And uh, uh, remember that the license that we are using is a Creative Commons by attribution only, which uh, means that it's free to use under this license. Uh, there are no limits. Uh, you can use it outside of our S3 software platforms as long as you provide attribution to S3 and OpenStreetMap. Uh, uh, here are some uh, benefits of vector-based maps in general. I'm sure many of you are aware of uh, what are vector-based maps, but uh, to me, this is like a list of like, reasons why we decided to do it uh, as a vector tile service. It provides a foundation for your web maps and applications. Uh, it looks great on high resolution displays. Uh, we have dynamic labeling where you can rotate the map and the labels will rotate with you. And in my opinion, uh, one of the greatest benefits of all is that you can customize the look of the vector base maps. And that's the demo that I'm going to show you in a few minutes. 
So uh, how uh, we created the vector base map, the OSM vector base map. So we started with a live replica of uh, the OSM data, and we hosted an uh, uh, ESRI. From there, we started creating these query layers using the Postgres expressions, and then we started creating the layers in uh, our GIS Pro project. And all that information, that documentation to put all, everything together came from the OSM uh, GitHub repository. We ended up having more than 100 layers, more or less, to make it work with our S3 software. And we spent months just improving the cartography, symbology, labeling, uh, settings, et cetera, in the pro project. After that, we created a, what we call a VTPK or a vector, vector tile package which contains all the information on the tiling scheme, uh, the cartography, and uh, other resources. From that uh, VTPK or package, we extracted the style file or the JSON code to finish uh, editing the cartography of the map because it's so complex that works you know, uh, throughout many scales that we had to work on it or finish it uh, by editing the JSON code. After that, we put it together back into the package, and then uh, we publish it uh, as a vector tile service in ArcGIS Online. OK, so now before my demo, this is basically the steps that I'm going to go through. Uh, basically, there are five steps that you can do right now. But in the next, I will say in the next two or three weeks, you will be able to do only three steps. But I'm going to go through from, from step one. Uh, first, uh, you have to create a copy of our S3 OSM tile layer in the ArcGIS.com map viewer. From that copy, you save it into your ArcGIS online account. Uh, you need to have an account. If you don't have one, you can open one for free, like a free developer account. From there, uh, you open a new tab in your browser and then you open our new ArcGIS Vector Tile Style Editor, which is an application that we have released also. It's in beta version right now also, but it's really cool. And from there, you can open the, the, your copy, you can style it, customize it, then you save it into your account again, and then you can share it and publish it and use it for your web maps and applications. All right, let's go to the demo. All right, so I will say uh, I recommend you to start going uh, through the, our Living Atlas website. Let me zoom in quickly here. And I'll share with you these URLs at the end, uh, livingatlas.rgs.com. From here, this is like uh, the place where we have the, uh, the collection of uh, a lot of maps, applications, and layers that you can use uh, with our S3 software. Oops. From here, you go to Browse. You click on Base Maps. Make sure that you have only vector tiles chosen. And maybe you need to still uh, type OpenStreetMap in the search. And we found it here. This is a tile layer that we are interested in. So view item details, it opens a new tab. Here you get a description. You can see when was the last time that it was updated. From here you click on the thumbnail, open in Map Viewer. Then it, this takes you to the ArcGIS.com Map Viewer. From here you need to be signed in, like I'm signing under Jessica right here. Uh, if not, you have to sign in at this moment. So you see we have our uh, OpenStreetMap tile layer displaying here. On the more options, uh, we go to copy. And then this is the copy that we are going to save. I'm going to save it into my account. And you can change the title, tags, etc. create item. OK, so now it's saved. Now, in a new tab, you open the new ArcGIS Vector Tile Style Editor. And let me zoom in to, so you can see the URL. And I'll share it with you at the end also. It's at developers.rgs.com slash vector tile style editor. All right, get started. 
And from here, the first thing that is going to ask you is uh, what base map you want to start customizing. So we have several uh, tabs here that you can choose from. Uh, these are all of our S3 vector base maps that you can choose and customize. In the next few weeks, there will be a new item here for OpenStreetMap. So uh, this is where you're going to start working on it uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, so when I, when I mentioned before the steps one through five, uh, then you're, uh, when I said that you can do only st steps uh, three until five, uh, step three is here. So you are going to start here. You don't have to do that copy like I did before. But this is how you can do it right now in these days. So you go to my styles tab, and because I am already signed in into my RJS Online account, I'm going to see here the list of all the uh, tile layer items that I have saved in my account. From here, see that I have the OpenStreetMap copy that I just saved a few minutes ago. I click on it. This is like a preview map to make sure that you're choosing the correct one. Select style. And then this is the interface of the uh, style editor. So from here on the left, you, you will have a panel of uh, the list of all the layers containing the map. Uh, you can expand the groups. And you can click on layers, and then it opens a new panel with all the symbol properties. If you click on a, if you click on a symbol layer, you will see symbol properties. Or if you click on a label uh, layer, you will see lay, uh, label properties. So let's uh, zoom in quickly to uh, Detroit. Just to show you an example. Okay. So let's remember that this is in beta. Both things are in beta version right now, so things may, uh, may be changing drastically in the next few days, so keep that in mind. But we always welcome your uh, feedback if you see any issues. All right, so let's just click quickly on this uh, layer. You can uh, click on the map to identify layers also, and then that's how you can start customizing layers. So I click on a building feature, meaning that I, I'm going to customize the look of all the buildings of the map. So if I want to change the color to something like dark orange, see how everything changed to orange. Uh, the map will refresh uh, automatically when you make any changes. Uh, there are many properties that you can change throughout scales. You can change colors throughout scales. Uh, you can click on whatever you want on the map, and you will be able to change everything in the map. Uh, in the next two or three weeks, we will be enabling uh, a new uh, panel called uh, Quick Editor. It's something that is working right now uh, with our S3 vector base maps, but uh, we need to get it uh, to, to work correctly with our uh, OpenStreetMap, so stay tuned for it. But let me sh quickly show you how it works with one of our uh, S3 vector base maps. All right. So let's just choose dark gray canvas. And this, this is, okay, so this is a quick editor panel. This is basically, if you don't have a lot of time, if you think that editing layer by layer is too overwhelming, time consuming, uh, I would recommend you to start with a quick editor where in a, in a matter of a few minutes, in a few clicks, you can do drastically, drastic changes in the map, drastic changes in symbology and labeling. So just something very quick to, to show you. We can click on randomize, and it will randomize. Uh, it will ran make uh, colors random of all the layers in that map that you have displayed. So all the layers in the map are grouped in these main categories: land, water, roads, etc. So with one click, you can change all the layers related to water, all the layers related to roads, etc. So let's just click apply colors to see what happens to the map. See how everything changed. And you can keep clicking randomize all the time. You will get a new uh, different map every time. 
So this is for symbols. For labels, we can off we offer several uh, dozens of uh, fonts that you can choose from and make the map uh, look different. Plus some other, a couple of other uh, changes that you can do for label size, road width, etc. So in a matter of minutes, you can have a totally new, different map. Then when you're ready, just click Save, Save As, and they will be saved as a tile layer item into in your RGS online account, and then you will be ready to share it and publish it, etc. Let me uh, show you quickly uh, one open uh, a copy that I created by customizing it layer by layer. I call it uh, Motown OSM. Uh, I was inspired more by our colors related to the Motown era, the the seventies, where uh, many colors were more like uh, under uh, yellow, uh, orange, uh, dark green, and brown colors. So this is an example of uh, a, a customized uh, S3 OSM vector base map as an example of something that you can do as well right now using our style editor. And you can keep clicking on things and keep changing things, etc. All right, my few minutes left. Let me go back to my PowerPoint. So once again, in the, in the next few uh, weeks, we will be, you will be able to just go straight to the style editor and do all your work from there. So uh, some uh, future plans for our uh, S3OSM vector base map, we will be releasing it out of beta by the end of November, more or less. Uh, we will continue updating the cartography that will be a never-ending work for us, as well as the data. Uh, the quick editor capability, like I mentioned before, uh, in the next uh, few weeks, we will enable it. Uh, our cartographers at S3 will be creating uh, creative styles, uh, like the one that I just showed you. Uh, some S3 distributors will be uh, publishing their own uh, versions of their OpenStreetMap as uh, using their local uh, projections, such as the UK and Netherlands, and more frequent data updates. And this is a slide that I told you with some uh, uh, important URLs for me because, uh, for example, the blogs, that's where we do all the big announcements when we do big updates or uh, for the style editor, for example, I recommend you to go to our ArcGIS blog and that's where we can you can keep uh, uh, tracking what we are doing with our OSM vector base map and our style editor. We welcome your feedback because both things are in beta. Uh, we are right now uh, yeah, getting a lot of recommendations to improve things, so I recommend you to go to our uh, GeoNet location, uh, which is like our S3 forum where people can share their feedback uh, with us. And, uh, so that's it for me. So thank you very much for coming. And I'll be here until Sunday at the S3 booth. If you have any questions or if I, I have to show you again this demo, uh, I'll do it again. And uh, my coworker, Steve Moore, will be doing another presentation on Sunday uh, morning uh, related to other products that we offer related to OpenStreetMap. So thank you very much. So maybe we have time for one or two questions. No, I know we're running out of time, so maybe it's good to have the next one presenting right now. So thank you.